you're just buying stuff and trying to make money off of arbitrage. Like that shouldn't be your mindset. Your mindset should be like, how do I provide value to other humans? Because at, at the end of the day, that's the only way you're really going to make that long-term money. And if you really want to make money long-term on Amazon, the only way to do it is by selling a brand. You can either sell your own brand, which I highly recommend. If you're good at selling your own brand and building your own brand, that is great. But there's another way you can hack it is by selling someone else's brand. Welcome, fellow entrepreneurs, to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now, your host, Todd Welch. Great to have my friend Isaiah here with me today. He is the owner of Online Selling Partners, founder and owner. And him and I met over at the Amazon Pow Wow in West Palm Beach. What was it? Uh, last year, a couple of years ago? Something like that. Whenever that was. And uh, that was, you know, I thought it was a great show. Um, but then I found out later that the attendance was way down because it was during uh, Prime Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It, it was interesting and they, it they didn't announce it until really late so they're like oh crap yeah to have a conference on prime day but it was really good event because i got to meet a lot of good people met you of course and that's been fantastic getting to know you a little bit and i i think the the listeners today are really going to be interested in your story and what you're doing because you and i are both doing a method of selling on Amazon that's a little bit different than what a lot of people know. So a lot of people know private label, wholesale, arbitrage. But of course, you and I have really moved into a method called Amazon Exclusive Wholesale. Yep. And so we're going to dive into that a lot on this episode and go into what that means to actually get exclusives on products and stuff. But before we go into that, Let's dive into your background because uh, I heard you on Aaron Cordova's podcast and you have a really awesome background. So if they want to hear your full story, they can listen to Aaron Cordova's podcast. It's a, a fantastic one. I'd check it out. But let's uh, let's have the five minute version here and then we can dive into the Amazon exclusive method. Oh wow! Well, thank you so much for that introduction. That was uh, that was too nice of you, Todd. And, and I'm I'm so glad that we happened to be sitting at the same table down there at the powwow and and uh, got to meet each other. And I was like, man, there's another guy out there that's that's doing this model that's uh, about my size. So I that's the thing. There's not a lot of people like that are doing this model. There's a couple big companies out there that are doing this model of. Uh, what you call the uh, the exclusive wholesale. And I, I like to call it a brand partnership model because I like to just partner directly with the brands and and work exclusively with them. So I, I look at it as a partnership. So, uh, you know, obviously that's why I named my company Online Selling Partner. So, but going back a little bit, uh, let's talk about the history. So I started uh, selling online when I was 11 years old. I sold some Legos on eBay. And my mom, she taught me how to do it. She had been selling on eBay since 99 as a side gig. And uh, uh, we like yard sales, buy stuff, flip it on eBay. And uh, eventually uh, in 2015, I seen this button on Amazon. It said, sell on Amazon. And I said, mom, I got to click this button. I want to sell on Amazon. And uh, so I, I started selling on Amazon and it, uh, uh, you know, and then I learned about this thing called FBA, you know, and, and I was like, man, there's all these customers on Amazon. And so that was great. And then I, so I was going to yard sales, going to location, doing the retail arbitrage, uh, eventually, you know, buying pallets, liquidation did very well. I ended up selling around 14,000 items by, uh, in 2018. And then, my entire Amazon account got shut down because of three inauthentic complaints. Oh, and that's always fun. yeah, yeah, no, that was crazy. So I didn't have invoices from the manufacturers or distributors. So it was, it was, it was done for. Um, so it was down for eight months. They were holding $40,000 from me for eight months. It was a nightmare. And I said, I will never sell on Amazon again. I am getting into real estate, which I 
I, I did learn a lot about real estate and I actually, I do build single family houses on the side. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm kind of glad that I learned about real estate during that time, but I you build, you build single family homes. Yes. So I have a building company locally here in Indiana wow. and uh, we built about 20 homes this year and uh, we're, we're continuing to scale that company and it's uh it's a great, it's a great company. And it's, you know, I, I work with my family on it and my grandpa is the manager of the company and it's, it's, it's really fun. We, we, what we try to do is we try to um, get people who are renting uh, to be able to afford a house. So we build and sell the most affordable house in the entire County, entire area. So it's, it's really rewarding when I'm sitting there at the closing table with a, a family that's, you know, young and, uh, and they're like, we were renting and now we can afford a house and it's actually cheaper than our rent payment. So that's, wow, it's, very nice. it's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. So don't mean to go on a tangent there, but um, so we do that. And then, uh, but as far as the uh, going into the Amazon thing, I was like, I'm never going to do it again. But so, but I, they still have this $40,000. So I'm trying to trying to get this money back. I hired a consultant that was an Amazon consultant that didn't work. Um, you know, I had 40 or 50 appeals to Amazon. I, I contacted Jeff. I did everything, you know, Jeff at amazon.com. Uh, there, you know, there's an email out there. Yep, yep. Uh, they, they did nothing. So I eventually got a hold of somebody on LinkedIn, actually. That's when I started going on LinkedIn. That was Am Jeff Bezos's technical advisor. And uh, he uh, ended up, give me a call from Seattle and said, you know, sorry for what Amazon's done for to you. And here's your money back. Here's your account back. Sell from the manufacturers and distributors. <laughs> and I said, all right. So I learned that, you know, back then I wasn't very good at real estate and wasn't making any money. So I said, well, I do know how to make money selling online. And so I started knocking on doors and manufacturers near me. I just went to manufacturers near me. And uh, I finally found a, a manufacturer that was a candle company and I ended up partnering with them. And I started opening more accounts with distributors and doing the wholesale model with distributors. So this candle company, they were used to sell on Amazon. They had been shut down. I started selling with them and uh, we grew their revenue to about a million dollars in revenue on Amazon. And we were the only sellers. So that was my first brand partnership. Nice. exclusive uh, deal or whatever um, was the, the candle company. So I got to a point where I realized, I said, if I really want to scale this, then I'm going to need some money to hire a good team. And so that's uh, eventually I made enough money where I could start hiring, you know, people that were smarter than me. Cause I always heard you got to hire people smarter than you. And it's so true. <laughs> hire people smarter sure. than you. And so I, even if they're expensive, but they're, they'll, they'll pay off in the long run. You just got to look multi years out. Don't look like a person that when you hire someone, the ROI on that person does not happen in one month. It doesn't happen in two months. Usually for an expensive head, it, it, especially at a startup, usually you don't see that ROI until years, maybe two or three years later. If, if there are somebody that is going to really help you out. And so it, you know, for me as an impatient kid, it's kind of hard. But now, you know, after seeing the fruits of it, um, of, of hiring a good team, it's it's been uh, really, really wonderful. So and we're continuing to to try to scale and grow. And now we have 32 people, Southern Indiana. Um, we work out of a 60,000 square foot facility here in Sellersburg, Indiana. So everybody usually are like, wait, you're, you're an Amazon seller from Sellersburg. I mean, what's, what's yeah, that all? That's a, that's a good area though. Right. Because you got a lot of uh, Amazon warehouses around there. Don't you? Yeah. And, yeah. And we actually um, do enough volume where we send semi trucks directly to Amazon facilities. So, which is, which is really very nice. So yeah. So with all of that stuff that you've done, uh, you're what about 55 years old. Is that right? No, no, I'm, I'm uh, 23 and going on 24. Yeah, 23 going on 24. That's just crazy. And when when I first met you, that was one thing that really impressed me because, you know, I, I'm I'm at about between four to five million in sales this year, but That's you awesome. guys are what 
16, 20 million, something like that. Um, we'll see how this year finishes, but it's, yeah, you're right, right in the ballpark for sure. Right in that area. So doing fantastic and you're not quite half my age, but, uh, getting there, I'm going to be 42 here in a few days. So, well, well, that's definitely you are way ahead of me, at least age wise. Yeah. Well, it's not about age, I guess, but, uh, I'm just really blessed that I have an awesome team. And I have an awesome, uh, uh, you know, family and, and people around me that that we can make this happen. Because if it wasn't for them, I could only do so much by myself, maybe a million or two million in revenue. But you got to, you know, I, the biggest thing I've learned is you got to build an awesome team around you. And, and you know, I, our goal is 100 million in revenue. So, you know, in a couple of years, we want to hit 100 million. That's why we're, you know, we might have a 32 people. It seems like a lot, but it's like we're trying to build something for the next couple of years for the future. So that's what we are constantly investing back in our team. Yeah. I, I think that's a really important point to press home is getting the right people around you. Correct. So how did you, we kind of jumped through that quickly, but how did you get to the point of being able to afford those initial big hires? Well, all I did is I went to Silicon Valley and got a big investment from, no, I'm just kidding. I did not do that. But uh, some of my friends did that. But uh, I did it the hard way by buying and selling and getting good deals. And I I mean, I I did one deal with some yeast during COVID where um, yeast was selling like crazy on Amazon and I was buying pallets of it and for $2.50 a pound and selling on Amazon for $20 a pound, you know, and uh, that's just a wholesale deal, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and that's, you know, I was able to really, that really helped me be able to afford more people, but it's just, you just do it as it comes, you know, and, uh, you know, first you start off with warehouse, you want to, you know, or, or, or get a 3PL for us. We have our own warehouse because it works for us. Um, But a lot, you know, a lot of people I would recommend getting a good 3PL. Um. And that's what you hire out first. And then uh, from there, uh, I started hiring people for Amazon um, uh, been, uh, Seller Central Management. Um, and then I hired a really good integrator. So I use uh, EOS as a framework uh, more recently. And EO what? EOS, Entrepreneur EOS. Operating System, which yep. is... Uh, Same one we were using. Yeah. And so Great I have a... Books. I have a really good integrator. I'm the visionary. So anybody who reads that book knows what that means. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's hard to find a good integrator. It's, it's harder to find a good integrator than a visionary. There's plenty of visionaries that are terrible at executing. And so, but having somebody that can really work with a visionary and execute well together is a hard pair to find. So I'm really glad that I found that early on. Um, and it was a guy that I knew most of my life, big corporate guy had worked 26 years in fortune 500 companies and doing operations. And so, um, you know, he had just retired and, uh, at 54, he retired younger and, uh, I was this young guy and I was like, I need somebody with maturity. So I, I knew I had enough wisdom to know that you, you need every thing in your business. You know, you can't just think oh a bunch of young guys are going to win or something i mean they might but it's good to have a mix of abilities and uh, on a team right you know you're if you're building out really good team and in uh, baseball and everybody's really good at at hitting home runs but nobody's good at pitching you're not going to win right you're not going to you're not going to get anywhere so you got to have people that you got to have a good pitcher you got to have a good uh, guy out in left field i mean you got to you know if you're going to really have a good team. And then you got to have your power hitters too. So that's something that I'm really glad I got an integrator early on that really works well with me. And I said, Hey, I need you to manage the people because I don't like managing people and I know I'm not very good at it. I have no experience at it. And I, and now, you know, I'm getting more experience at it. So that's one thing I think that intimidates a lot of people is, Oh, wow. I have to be a manager. Well, no, you it, you don't. You, you just got to hire a manager. <laughs> it's then uh, then it works out. So, um, and then from there uh, we started hiring all kinds of different 
supply chain was big for us. Uh, uh, you know, somebody to buy and sell. And, um, uh, and then now we have marketing people, uh, sales people. Uh, we just, we just have the whole gambit. We even have a, uh, international, uh, sales manager now. Uh, so because we're doing more international sales and off channel, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Advertising. <laughs> Very good. So, so essentially you flipped products to get the funds to then hire people to help you build your business. Yeah. The business has, has grown very organically. Another thing is, um, uh, banks have helped me with getting loans. Yeah. That's what I was going to go into. I, have you guys taken much debt to get to the size that you are? Correct. What kind of percentage is that? If you don't mind sharing? Uh, I don't know about percentage off the top of my head, um, but we do, we do take a lot of loans for like a, uh, we have a line of credit with a, a really nice reputable bank that gave us a million dollars line of credit um, which is very nice early on. I would say early on, I was able to get that. And then yeah, I those have- lines of credits are, are great, but I, I bet you your operator knows what your debt to income ratio is. Cause that's. Oh, absolutely. Or I, I have, a, I have a controller now that, that does that. Yes, they probably know as well, but your operator will know as well. Cause you want to keep an eye on that and make sure it's uh, at least 1.5 to one. Yes. So basically if you have a million dollars in debt, you need to have at least a million and a half in inventory. Uh, yeah. Well, I say, uh, that, you know, exactly as well as I know that can't, uh, can't be underwater to survive very long. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about that a little bit before we hit record that the the interest rates have just gone yeah. through the roof. Yeah. I mean, my my lines of credit went from I think when I started and got them, they were in the four percent range and now they're all nine, ten percent. It's just gone crazy. So basically my interest payments have doubled. Oh, absolutely. A similar similar scenario with us. Amazon loans are nice. Uh, just do them for short term. You know, don't do long term debt. Short term debt. Just try to stay away. You know, I'm like I can tell you, I'm not a Dave Ramsey where I say don't do any debt, but I'm also uh, not for long term debt. So I think, you know, try to if you're going to take on debt, take on a safe amount that you know that you can at least sell that inventory for cost and and you're not out too much. So. Um, uh, you got to be really careful. You got to know your numbers, make sure you're profitable. All that Don't stuff. carry a lot of inventory, especially right now in this environment. It is a crazy environment out there. We see a lot of manufacturers and distributors getting flooded with extra inventory because uh, they've tried to overproduce during COVID because of the spike. Mm-hmm. So just, just don't carry a lot of inventory. Try to, you know, we try to carry about 60 days on hand, 90 at the most. You know, if, if you Does that can include just, what's in Amazon, or are you talking in your warehouse? But yeah, in Amazon too. So in yeah. Amazon and your warehouse is a total of about sixty days. Sixty to ninety days. Yeah. Sixty to ninety. Okay. Yeah, we're about the same. I try to keep about twenty to thirty days in the warehouse and about forty to forty-five days in Amazon. Yeah, it, it's it's about the same. Yeah, and so we, you know, keep your turns, you know, low and. And we're always trying to figure out how to get keeps turns lower, and and you know you're gonna make bad buys and good buys, but you know it's 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 just do whatever you can right now in this environment to keep. I mean, it can be really tempting because you might see some really good deals where we've had to pass up some deals where we've had some suppliers come out and say, "Hey, if you take all of this inventory here, we'll give you." And then we're like, "Yeah, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. The inventory is too expensive right now with interest yeah. rates." Yeah, we. I just had one where one of our suppliers is uh, basically end of life one of these products, and they offered us the entire like hundred thousand dollars plus rest of their inventory. It's kind of a take it all or not kind of thing, and I'm like, uh, I cannot really drop a hundred thousand dollars on this inventory that's probably going to last me for six, seven months, you know. So. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. You know, there's shiny objects out there where you're like, I know the return is going to be good, you know, but it, yeah, yeah, it's just, you keep low inventory right now. We don't know what's going to happen in six, 12 months. So, yeah. but anyway, 
Uh, Todd, you want to talk about brand partnership and exclusive wholesale? I think it's yeah. a great segue. Let's dive into that and uh, just give us an overview for you what brand partnership is, Amazon exclusive wholesale, as I call it, and uh, how you got into that. Yeah. So I, I mentioned before that candle company kind of got my interest early on because I was the only seller, right? I They were not on Amazon, right? And we brought them to Amazon. But I was like, wow, you know, this is really powerful. It's different. You know, normally with wholesale, it's like, you're not really focused on the customer. You're just, how do I flip boxes, right? But this is different where you're, if you're the only seller for a brand, you start thinking like the brand. Well, first off, you want to please the brand and you're trying to please it because they're your customer. But you're also thinking about your Amazon customer because you're thinking, we, you want the Amazon customer to, to buy your product, not the competitors. I mean, it's it, it you kind of get into this private label mindset where, you, you know, what I say, I treat every brand that I'm partnered with like my own. And that's the whole company. We want to treat every brand like it's our own. And we also want to be a key solution for the brand. So the brand can just have us do Amazon for them. So uh, essentially what how it works is we buy the product wholesale. And then we become the only seller and we do everything for the brand. We do the A plus content, the storefronts, the advertising management, the, um, you know, whatever else it is to do with Amazon. We, we, we do it for these brands. And uh, it's very much about building that relationship with the brand to trust you to do that because we're like, well, sh- how, why should we trust you to do that when we have Joe that's been selling on Amazon for a while and Steve and Mark and, and, and Susie, you know? But you're like, well, you could go to these brands and say, well, they only have one picture on your listings. There is no A plus content. The they're not in stock all the way, and they only have half your catalog listed. You know, are they really have your best interest in mind? If you go with us, we'll list your full catalog, carry everything. We will, you know, uh, do all your storefront A plus content, everything. And then for the brand, all they have to do is give us exclusivity. There's no cost to them because they're selling it to us on margin. And um, we're not greedy. We're not trying to take some crazy margin. So that that's essentially how it works. And, you know, make sure you have good contracts in place. And it's one thing my, my operations integrator guy uh, has really taught me is uh, he's been in business long enough. Don't do business on a handshake doesn't matter if it's your best friend you know it's like there's too many things that'll go wrong it might go right for the next for the first six months but two years from now it could be you know something might happen and then you got to go back to the contract what does the contract say so um but yeah the contracts are, are are not only protect you but they protect the brand so they're in the best interest for the brand to have a good contract in place so anyway I'm kind of rambling on into a lot of this brand partnership, but that's generally how I got into it and generally how the model works. Yeah. So essentially you are partnering with the brand and in exchange for allowing you to be the only seller, you're treating it like your own private label product and doing all the images, the copy, the A plus, maybe ads as well and everything everything that goes along with it. Yeah, and I will say for ads, we manage the ads, but the brands will uh, contribute to the ad spend. Like we don't, we don't fully. It depends on our relationship, but the, the brands will will contribute to 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 that. Like some some brands, we might have like a really crazy margin, and and it's it just makes sense for us to to just do the ad spend. But most of our brands, we have like a thin margin and. Um, and they contribute to the ad spend, but we manage everything. And we also do, you know, we're motivated to sell as many units or products as possible. So, you know, we're, we're doing affiliate marketing now with brands. We're, tr- we're testing out creating um, TikTok videos. We're doing a lot of cool stuff in our R&D department to try to bring more value to the brands. We're helping them with their D2C sites even. You know, we're doing a lot of, you know, we're going international with the brands. I mean, there's, there's a lot of that we're doing because every time we sell a product, we make money. So it's our incentives are very aligned. And a lot of times these brands, they don't have an Amazon department. They Or if they do, it might be one guy and he's overwhelmed because he's also doing 10 other things. So it's, it's usually needed uh, service for most brands. 
So now are you 100% exclusive brand partnerships or do you also do the regular wholesale? We still do some regular wholesale if we can get a good deal. Um, we're trying to move away from it. I will say that we are. What, uh, what percentage would you say? Uh, I would say right now we're probably getting to, you know, I actually have like the real uh, paperwork on that, but I, I would say we're we're getting close to 70, 30. We're 70% brand exclusive and 30% wholesale where it was 50, 50 for a while, but I feel like we're going that way. And I mean, my goal is definitely 80, 20, or even a hundred percent brand exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Same on my side. Uh, we're, we're more probably about 40 to 50% brand exclusive right now, but trying to move as fast as possible towards yeah. that route, because the, the number of competitors that are popping up on a lot of these listings are steadily increasing every day. Yeah, and what kind of value are you bringing to the brands just by being another seller out of the 17 and already on the ASIN? So, I mean, it's it's so much more gratifying and a better business model to partner directly with a brand and grow them. You know, it's it, you know, it takes more work, I omit it, but you only have to hunt once. You don't have to constantly hunt for another deal. If you just you hunt once, you get a relationship and you you'll work with that brand if you're good you know, for years to come. I mean, you know, most of our brands that we've been that that we've had don't don't leave. I mean, they usually if we constantly provide value to them, they have no reason to leave us. Um, you know, you're always going to have you know somebody that for whatever reason that, that they can't work with you for yeah whatever reason they sell or whatever. But but yeah, I mean, for the most part, if you're constantly providing more value, you know, it's it's a great relationship that you could have for years and years and years. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, you know, most of my exclusive partnerships, 90% of them came from originally being one of many sellers. Yeah. Same and here. I built that relationship along the way. I'm, I wasn't just sending purchase orders. I was calling the owner and talking to him, seeing how business is doing and becoming more, you know, like friends, getting to know their business and the products they sell and stuff like that. And then it shifted into the exclusive. Uh, do you have a lot that were like that? Or are you more going directly for the exclusive from the beginning? It's both. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the split is right now, of how, uh, but I mean, it's, it's both. And, but a lot Times we'll go maybe directly for an exclusive on a few SKUs and then to kind of try us out. And then we'll eventually with the thoughts of getting the whole brand. Yeah, that that's a really good tactic, especially when you're talking to them. If they say, no, we don't want any more Amazon sellers or something like that. Then you say, well, how about this one here that's not selling very well and it looks horrible? Maybe we can try that one. That one's worked for me to get your foot in the door and then build a relationship from there. That's right. That's great. I like that. Sure. Uh, so the brand exclusives, do you think that is the route that people need to go in the future? Or do you still see a lot of opportunity in just general wholesale, maybe retail arbitrage, stuff like that? Depends on who you are and what your goals are. That's what I say. There is always going to be money in retail arbitrage. There's always going to be money in wholesale. There's, But if you're trying to scale your business to a multi-million dollar predictable business, you can't do that with retail arbitrage. I don't know one retail arbitrage guy that's doing $10 million a year and selling the same products every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just yeah. doesn't. That'd be a lot of hustle in retail arbitrage. Maybe online arbitrage, but still, you'd have to have a big team. Oh. Yeah, you'd have to do a big team, but none of them are selling the same stuff. You're just always mm -hmm. going to new stores and, you know, one day the store works great for you. And then the next day they're like, nah, we don't have anything in stock. You know, it's just a constant headache. Wholesale is similar, you know, so wholesale is similar. It's just, it's a little better. I recommend doing that versus retail arbitrage. But, sure. um, but you're at the end of the day, think about what you're doing. You're just buying stuff and trying to make money off of arbitrage, like that shouldn't be your mindset. Your mindset should be like, how do I provide value 
to other humans? How do I provide value to, to, because at at the end of the day, that's the only way you're really going to make that long-term money. And if you really want to make money long-term on Amazon, the only way to do it is by selling a brand. You can either sell your own brand, which I highly recommend. If you're good at selling your own brand and building your own brand, that is great. But there's another way you can hack it is by selling someone else's brand. Mm -hmm. And so you can, it's a little bit of a growth hack where you don't have to do all the work of finding a product, importing, marketing, all that stuff. This, they already did that. You just have to do the Amazon side. So, but you know, my ultimate goal is to own my own brands. I think like that's the ultimate, you know, because then you get, you, you have no one to answer to, you own it, you, um, you, you call the shots and you own the equity. You can resell that brand, you know, if, if, but if, if you are maybe don't feel like that's, it it takes a long time to don't have the patience or you don't uh, really have the vision for that. And you don't have a niche then, then, you know, but you like flipping stuff on Amazon, you definitely should go for the brand partnerships and partner directly with the brand. And so like my goal is to continue to do brand partnerships, continue to scale other brands and then eventually, you know, launch my own brands. And, and I, you know, I, I don't think I'll ever get away from the whole brand partnership model or have no plans to, but I think it's good to to diversify and and own your own brands and 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 build and grow them. But I want to I want to do that when I'm I'm ready uh, to really launch and launch a multi million dollar brand. I don't want to just launch a few SKUs on Amazon, just selling another rubber ducky like everybody else is, <laughs> and then Chinese uh, factory comes in and and beats you out in price because that's not building a brand. There's plenty of private label sellers that are not building a brand. They're just yeah. flipping products. Yeah. So really what you what you need to do is build a brand, build a customer, loyal fan base, boy, build a, uh, a customer list, build a, you know, all that stuff that what I see brands actually do, real brands actually do. That's that's really what you need to do. And uh, if you want to be selling on Amazon in the next five years um, and, and, and scaling. So that's yeah, my- for, for sure. I, I agree with with all of that Uh, from what I've seen talking to a lot of different large wholesale sellers, they, they end up around between 20 to 30% private label and then wholesale from there as they grow. Because when you're in the wholesale world, you see a lot of opportunities as well and a lot of empty space. And, you know, maybe some of those companies that wouldn't let you be the exclusive and you see them selling a ton listings are all garbage all those are potential opportunities to build a brand, but for sure building a brand is super important because obviously here in the U S or most of the world, we can't necessarily compete directly with someone in China. And so we have to build that brand around the product so that people are willing to pay more for it. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. because And then people there, you know, honestly, yeah, there's all this talk about people are not brand loyal and all this stuff and whatever. And it's like, yeah, there is a lot to that. But at the end of the day, there if if you're providing at the end of the day, if you're providing value, even you know whatever that value is, you're going to be able to uh, build a loyal customer base, and people are way more likely to buy again from you if you are. Uh, a company they've dealt with before, if it's um, a product that they're familiar with, you know, all of those things. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's never going to go away. Brand loyalty and brands are never going to go away. And especially if you can find a niche where you can really carve it out. Like, like I, I uh, just seen a company the other day, they've been a brand that's been around for 20 years, no really competition. Like they sell like uh, board games, right? You can't mm-hmm. really knock off a board game. It's an IP, right? Like, yep, not legal. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't. It, it's such a great thing to sell. And then, like another guy, he was selling um, uh, waterproof Bibles, and I was like, oh, wow. such a random thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Waterproof Bibles. But he's like, you know, he's, and I'm actually like talking to him right now about you know, uh, maybe selling his product. But but I'm thinking like. You know, those are types of things like 
I don't see a lot of competition for it. It's amazing. They, they've been around for like 20 years and, and uh, they're selling their, their niche, whatever it is that like, man, how do I, how do I do more of that? But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. I'm sure you can talk to brand owners, but as far as getting the brand partnerships, that really, if you're in the wholesale business, you should definitely try it. I mean, at least try it, come clean. Uh, don't hide in the corner saying, Oh, I'm just this, I'm not really supposed to be selling on Amazon, but I am like, that's the worst, man. Like you got to come out and you got to you start talking to the brands and be open about who you are, what you're doing. And, and it can turn out a way better business model than hiding in the shadows as the secret Amazon seller. That's that, that model's never going to last. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't be those kind of people who are, you know, buying under a uh, fake name so that they don't know you're selling on Amazon and, oh, and tanking the price. And that, that's all going to come around to bite you eventually. It will. And I've seen it happen over and over. I got friends that do that and it's just, it's not a lasting business model. Yeah. So wh what would you say to someone out there who maybe hasn't sold on Amazon or has just started selling on Amazon and they're like, yeah, all this sounds great, but you know, I don't know how to make nice graphics or nice copy or A plus content and stuff like that. How, what would you say to someone in that position? Well, if you know any brands that are pretty large brands that need some help, definitely send them to us and we'll give you a very good <laughs> permission. There you go. <laughs> but we will really. But no, nah, if you're just starting on Amazon, start with retail arbitrage. You will learn the ropes. You'll learn how logistics works. You'll learn how what sells, what doesn't. You'll learn about sales rank. rank. Um, and just start selling. The more you can sell, the better. Just to learn. And then um, if you're, uh, then you if you do any wholesale or anything like that, just 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 buy and sell. Just learn how to buy low and sell high. That's how I would start. And then um, I, uh, I I would say that if you're thinking about jumping into this brand exclusive partnership thing right away the easiest way to do it is as the bigger the brand and the more experience the brand has with amazon they're going to expect more from you but yeah. like how i started with a candle company that wasn't even on amazon everything was upside right if you can start with a local small company that has a great product or it doesn't have to be local or it could be just a product you like that you know you know it's a small company that's not on amazon like I had a friend the other day, they're like, they were selling like Arizona made cactus holders, whatever. They were really cool and they weren't on Amazon or something. I was like, well, just, you know, if you want to get into it, it's a great way to learn. And, you know, you might not sell, let's say you sell five a month or something, whatever it is, it's all upside. The brand's going to be happy with you, right? So that's a great way to start. And there's plenty of little brands out there. Like another one, they the guy was talking to me about it was some guy who sells like blackberry jam or something, you know, where it was just like this little thing, but it was like this amazing, you know, no, it wasn't blackberry, some other like very niche berry or whatever it was. It was like this elderberry or something. I don't know, like something that you don't hear about very often as a jam. And then, mm -hmm. you know, but people were searching on Amazon. There was search volume for it. So, I mean, there that's, that's how I would start if I were you. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. That's a that's a great idea to find a local small business that's not on Amazon, not thinking about Amazon because there's there's no really downside for them. And if you screw up, well, that's a good learning opportunity to do it right the next time and yeah. keep building from there. Yep, that's what I would do. That's what I did do. <laughs> awesome. Well, very good, uh, Isaiah. This has been a great conversation. I think people pick up a lot of good tips. Any last things before we wrap up that we haven't touched yet that you want to dive into? I would just say, keep listening to Todd's podcast and all of his content. He's an awesome guy. And I think his heart's in the right place and he's only here to help. So that's, that's all I got. I appreciate that. And if people want to get in touch with you, connect with you, what's the best place to do that? Well, LinkedIn is my primary social media. So Isaiah Fritz on LinkedIn, uh, you'll see me right right there. Um, and then uh, uh, Twitter, I'm on Isaiah Fritz OSP on Twitter. And um, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll look, just Google Isaiah Fritz. Uh, 
online selling partner. You'll, you'll, you'll see me on, on one of those places. Love for you to reach out, please reach out. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm all about networking. All right. Awesome. I appreciate you coming on the show, Isaiah. This has been great. Yep. Sounds good, Todd. I'm going to, I'm just starting a podcast here soon, so I'm going to have to get you on mine. Yeah, for sure. Do you know the name of it yet? I'm just going to call it the online selling partner podcast. It's not there very good. Awesome. <laughs> so if you're listening, find that on your podcast or whatever you use to find podcasts. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll work on it anyway, but listen to Todd. <laughs> Sounds All good. Right. All right, Isaiah. Have a good one. You too. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.